cops are murdered in cold blood at a Florida rest stop. That was coming down off of this adrenaline rush, and in reality, what's going on was starting to dawn on me. All three suspects are locked up for murder. One's determined to get out, no matter how long it takes. He was, you could say, a troublemaker inside an institution. 20 years later, he finally finds freedom. But a drunken night could ruin everything, and his only choice is to disappear. In a rural area, it can be easy to blend in. We knew that he could be dangerous. We would be losing our opportunity if we didn't make contact right away. 21-year-old Walter Rose looks clean-cut, but he leads a reckless lifestyle that often ends in trouble. I was a very irresponsible individual. When Rhodes is finally busted for two counts of robbery, he gets 15 years. After serving just four, he's released on parole. He's trying his best to make ends meet without breaking the law, but money's still tight. So when an old prison buddy calls him up, he smells opportunity. Jesse. For the next three days, Rhodes shuttles his new boss all over Miami. Keep going. He was doing drug transactions, cocaine. May 29th, 1977. It's been over a year since the brutal slaying of two cops in South Florida that landed Walter Rhodes in prison for life. After his second failed escape attempt, Rhodes is shipped to a maximum security facility. Rhodes knows that to survive inside, he'll have to learn how to defend himself. I was teaching karate in prison. Rhodes came up to me and asked me if he could join the class. Rhodes spends the next several months pouring his energy into training. He gained a lot more confidence once he got into the class. As a, a karate student, Rhodes was very diligent in what he did. Soon, the two are not just teacher and student, but friends. Mark becomes Rhodes' protector. We sent word out that Rhodes was friends of ours, and he was accepted. Rhodes becomes less of a troublemaker and more of a model prisoner. But he never stops thinking about life on the outside. Eventually I quit all this screwing around and I started educating myself. I spent a considerable amount of time taking every kind of course you can imagine and I uh, started straightening myself out. Over a decade passes. One day an article catches his eye and Rhodes finds himself opening up to the author, a woman named Sharon. She dedicates the next seven years to getting him out of prison so they can be together. In April 1994, Rhodes gets his chance at freedom. He's granted parole and is allowed to move to Santa Fe, where Sharon lives. I was uh, almost in shock after I did 18 years. As a free man with a woman he loves by his side, Rhodes hopes for a fresh start. She had a desktop publishing business. Hey, Rhodes quickly learns the trade and helps grow the business. We produced books and eventually got into website design. Within months, Rhodes proposes. Please marry me. Author, of course. Life seems promising. I love it. It's beautiful. Until one night. Getting drunk breaks the terms of his parole. Sharon is furious and threatens to turn him in. So we had an argument. I'm not gonna listen to this, forget it. As Rhodes storms out of the house, Sharon decides to call the police.
Rhodes finds himself back at Sharon's doorstep. Basically, she was sorry about everything that happened, and uh, I was sorry about everything that happened, too. And she agreed to uh, take me back in. Sharon is taking a huge risk by harboring a fugitive. Authorities have been looking for Rhodes since he skipped out on rehab. But he has a plan in mind for outsmarting law enforcement. The couple is now ready to start a new life. Rhodes and Sharon sell all their belongings and make their way to the small town of Twisp, Washington. They start easing into the laid-back country life of rural Washington, living as Michael and Sharon Garcia. I've got this new identity, and I'm loving it because it doesn't have a criminal record, and uh, I'm not who I was, and I start becoming uh, invested in this new personality, and I actually enjoyed it. Probably the only time in my life I've ever felt free. I have developed my own handyman business. And I made a pretty good bit of money just doing things on the side to help people out. Rhodes, who I always knew as Michael, just had that pleasant southern charm. I hired him to do some landscaping projects around the house. He was a great worker. He was enthusiastic, he was fun to talk to, and he knew how to work. Go ahead and develop it. Rhodes soon becomes a well-respected member of the small community. Well, my first impression was, you know, wow, this is a really good-looking guy, you know? He was really friendly and outgoing. September 2003. Fugitive Walter Rhodes has been on the run for almost a decade. He's living as a law-abiding citizen under a fake identity. But then, a cop digging into the cases of troopers killed in the line of duty suddenly puts Rhodes back on the radar. Rhodes surrenders without a fight, ending his nine-year run. Rhodes and Sharon both are immediately arrested. Sharon pleads guilty to one count of harboring a fugitive and is sentenced to one year of community service. Rhodes is charged with parole violation and perjury. I figured that they would slap me on a wrist and because I hadn't committed any more crimes except for living under a false ID, which I didn't abuse. Instead, but uh, it's been almost 10 years now I've been in prison and if a miracle don't occur, I'm gonna die in prison this time. Today, Rhodes is back in Florida where it all started. After violating his parole, he is now serving up the rest of his original life sentence. He and Sharon are no longer together. I'm definitely not the same Walter Rose. It's almost like it was somebody else. Yeah. I've liked what I've changed into. I was a responsible, productive citizen out there. And uh, that shows I could do it. It shows I did it. I just didn't do it quite the way everybody else wanted me to do it. <laughs>